Hello everyone and welcome into your KLBK Sports Connection Black Friday edition. That means shopping, no school, and college football, including the season finale of the 2019 Texas Tech Red Raiders. In their way, their hated rival, the Texas Longhorns, and on the line a chance for these seniors to go out on top and make history. Tech never won in Austin three consecutive times, but after victories at Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in 2015 and 2017, that's exactly the opportunity before the Red Raiders today. We'll start on the Red Raiders' first drive of the game. Jet Duffy back to pass, throws this one to Keyshawn Carter on the edge of the end zone. That's a touchdown right off the bat, 7 0 Tech. Second drive now. Tech up seven with the ball. Hand off to Sir Roderick Thompson. He sees nothing to his left. Goes to the right. No Longhorns there. That sets Texas up. Tech up well. Now from the 10 yard line, Sir Roderick gets the handoff. That's a touchdown. Tech on top 14 to nothing. Now we'll go later in the half. Game tied at 14. Jet Duffy throwing this one to Eric Izukama in the back of the end zone. That puts Tech back on top 21 to 14. A good response. Now Texas has the ball. And they're needing a response, and man, they do one play later. Devin Duvernay gets this pass. Adrian Fry is not there to make the stop. That's 75 yards to the house, and Texas ties the game up once again. Right before the half, they give the ball to Rashawn Johnson on the one-yard line. He easily powers that one in, 28-21 Texas. That wouldn't be his last, though. Johnson punches in another one-yard TD late in the third to put Texas up 42-24. Then about nine minutes to go in the game, the dagger, you guessed it, another one yard for Sean Johnson touchdown. He would tally three touchdowns in the game for a total of three yards. Texas Tech loses in Austin for the first time since 2013, 49-24, finishing their 2019 campaign 4-8. and eight. They played a good second half. We didn't have what it took in the third quarter. Uh, a couple key opportunities that were missed Early in the third quarter, I thought we played a very good first first half, um, but uh, didn't make enough plays in the third quarter, and then obviously um, just kind of ran out of gas in the in the fourth quarter. But uh, I thought those kids fought and they battled. Um, but and uh, there's a there's a there's a bright future. I'm excited because there's a lot of guys in that room that I thought had really good games that are sophomores and and freshmen. Now with football all over, I guess we can officially move to basketball where the number 12 Texas Tech basketball team back in action in Las Vegas after losing their first game to Iowa. Tonight against the Creighton Blue Jays, no Jemias Ramsey in this one out with an injury. Chris Clark getting the start in his place. He gets a layup early here to go up 2-0, but they dealt with another hot shooting night. Iowa was last night on fire now tonight with Creighton starting off 5-7 for seven from beyond the arc to start the game. That's a 12-point lead, 12-8 lead I should say. Now Kyler Edwards pulls up from a long range for a two, which is good enough for a lead, 13 to 12, but the Blue Jays were on fire. Marcus Zigorowski drives, he gets fouled here, but finishes it anyway. The free throw makes it a 10 point game. Zigorowski with 13 of those 23 points to start the game for Creighton. The game currently sits at halftime. Tech is trailing though, 46 to 32. Week three of the high school football playoffs is upon us. We start in Abilene as the Estacado Matadors do battle with the Midland Greenwood Rangers. First quarter, Estacado's Jeremiah Dobbins two-yard touchdown run on the direct snap. That ties the game at seven. Later in the half, Midland Greenwood on the goal line there, but Estacado makes a play. Kiki Murray picks it off in the end zone to keep it where it is. Now later in the half, Jalen Dobbins to Jalen Smith. That's a touchdown, Estacado. That ties the game at 14. Unfortunately, the Matadors would have no response for the Midland Greenwood offense, Estacado loses this one 41 to 14 to end their historic season. The Lubbock Cooper Pirates on the road in a rematch with the Randall Raiders. Cooper already up seven to zero in the first. Nehemiah Martinez gets the direct snap, gets all the way to the end zone, 14 to nothing early lead for the Pirates. A few possessions later, Cooper Lefever hits Isaiah Johnson on this rollout. He sees no one there first, but launches it to the running back, Isaiah Johnson. Comes down with the tough catch. And that puts them up 21 to nothing, just like that. And then the next possession, they're on the goal line. Nehemiah Martinez punches that one in 28 to zero. No looking back from there. Lubbock Cooper dominates the rematch with the Randall Raiders. Great alliteration. 58 to 14 is your final. Now over to Lowry Field, where the Abernathy Antelopes faced off with the free owner Chieftains. Second drive of the game. Abernathy's already on top seven, nothing. Bryson Daly, the quarterback, and he's a great player. He's already committed to Army in this one. 
He's going to drop back. No sack here. Jukes him out. Sees a wide open antelope in the end zone. That's Aaron Trevino. Antelope's on top, 14 to zip. After a muffed Chieftain's kickoff, Daly decides to keep it himself this time. He sees an opening to his right. This is their bread and butter, and you can't keep up with him if you're free owner. That's 50 yards, and he's gone 21 to nothing now. You would think they'd get something going, and they do. Freona does score, making it 21 to 7. But my goodness, another daily keeper just one play later. It's just too much Bryson Daly in this one. Another huge hole for him. The last one was 50. That's nothing. This one's 60 yards. Another touchdown for Abernathy. It wouldn't get any closer as Abernathy advances to the regional finals, beating Freona 62 to 14. Now to Dimmit, where the other Antelopes, undefeated Post, takes on West Texas High. Post responding to some Comanche offense. Here's some follow the leader as quarterback Slayton Pittman follows Nathan McDaniel down the field for a long run deep into Comanche territory. That would set up this eventual score from Ashton Jefferson off the toss. Post in control. Their offense does travel well. Fourth quarter now. Post adds to their lead with a run by Pittman for the touchdown. We've seen this all year long. Easy victory for Post as they advance as well, 48 to 14. Both Antelopes galloping into the next round. Now, looking at some full screens here, two-way high school football playoffs. Sundown taking on Holly. Holly scored late in the fourth quarter, went for two, ends up winning that one 22 to 21, eliminating the Sundown Roughnecks from this one. And then in 1A high school football playoffs, Jayton Jaybirds were the number one team. They actually were upset by the number eight Blackwell Hornets, 62-54. Motley County, also in six men though, they get a tight win the other way, 62 to 56 over Groom.